Hey everybody, so this big solar eclipse is coming up, and it's also Good Friday, and it just so happens that allegedly 2,000 years ago, another solar eclipse happened at the day that Jesus died. Specifically, it was three hours of darkness. Now, a couple things wrong with that. One, there's never been a three-hour-long solar eclipse, and also, the when, when Jesus died, it was close to Passover, which was close to a full moon. And you can't have a full moon with the solar eclipse. So a lot of people say this was just straight up a miracle. Just the whole world went dark for a whole three hours. Um, I definitely don't believe that. But if you do believe that, I definitely want to talk to you because the show is starting right now. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Truth Wanted. I am your host, Objectively Dan, and this is the live call-in show that happens every single week, Fridays at 7 p.m. Central Time. We talk to people about what they believe and why, and every single week I always have a special guest with me. This week is no different. It's Jim Barros. Jim, welcome back hey, to the how's show. It Thanks. It's been a minute. It's been a Looking minute. We were trying to figure out at least a year or so. Um, yeah, I think so it's been at least a year. Yeah, Jim, happy to have you back. I think Kelly and I did one earlier, but you and I haven't been on together. You and I haven't been on together, right. Yes, you did do one with Kelly um, a little bit ago. But yeah, no, you and I haven't been on um, in quite a while. And in case you don't know, this is a call-in show. So you should definitely call in to talk to us right now if you can. The number is 512-991-9242. Or you can call through your computer at tiny.cc slash Paul TW. And as always, Truth Wanted is a product of the Atheist Community of Austin, a 501c3 nonprofit organization dedicated to the promotion of atheism, critical thinking, secular humanism, and the separation of religion and government. Jim, it's been a minute since you've been on with me, but I think everybody knows you around here, right? I think you're, so. you're Jim Barrett. <laughs> you're famous. I don't think I have to, I don't think I have to introduce you. Jim, what's what's up nah. with you? Are you celebrating, are you celebrating Easter this weekend? You're gonna you know, uh, talk about our Lord. We, I had planned on doing some scuba diving, uh, doing a shore dive yeah. tomorrow, but we got double red flags probably. And uh, the visibility just being reported is mm. like four foot. So yeah. <laughs> no fun. We talked about this while, but you know, I'm scuba diving, scuba diving, scuba diving, sir. Scuba certified? diver certified. Well, I have, did not sleep <laughs> well last night. Certified. Apparently, it's showing. My goodness. Yeah, I, I'm now we certified. I did it while I was in Boy Scouts, and I did a dive in Texas at a lake that kind of sucked. And then I did the Florida Keys, and I never dived <laughs> again. I just <laughs> kind of just stopped doing it. Diving's kind of expensive. Like we got a good deal with it, but it's a uh, it's definitely expensive. Hobby. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, once you've got your gear like shore diving is usually free um where we go down in panama city it's like 10 or 15 bucks to get into the park and that's just a state park um so that's free and then there's some places off of like destin um and and west west florida plan panhandle that are all free so you can do that but a boat cool. dive is uh yeah boat dive is 150 bucks Oh, that's and not bad. For four that's hours. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Very cool. That's two Very tanks. Cool. Yeah. Well, if we were a scuba diving podcast, I would definitely keep talking about that. But folks, this is Truth Wanted. We want to talk to you about what you believe and why. So we do have some folks called in already, but we always love some more callers. So please consider calling in today if you haven't already. Today, it's Easter weekend. I expect, especially Christians who want to call in, you got to bring your gay, A game because, you know, uh, it's a big, big deal this weekend. It's 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 the weekend. But um, also, we have another segment called We Want the Truth, which is something that we do every week. We read the top three comments from our question of the week. And this week's question or prompt is going to be, why is it really called Good Friday? And we have our top three answers for you right now. Number three is coming from L.R. We Gadsden, 8483, who says, it's Good Friday because it's payday, as per usual. Uh, yeah, shout out <laughs> to folks that get paid on Fridays. That's like the optimal day to get paid because you, you feel the best, right? Especially when you're working paycheck to paycheck. Uh, definitely. Uh, can be a just struggle. before the weekend? Just before the weekend. Uh, but number two has come from Chuck Gatos 
five three eight seven which says good friday got its name when the disciples figured out it would be easier to hide the easter eggs if god wouldn't be playing um <laughs> that's a really good one i i don't know the whole history behind easter eggs and stuff i know there's is it vaguely christian in origin I, there's like christian symbols on know. there right you don't know i feel like oh, we should eggs, know that rebirth yeah I feel like out of yeah, all maybe people, someone call in and tell us maybe someone can call in and tell us about the easter because that's kind of a weird i don't know how you go from jesus to an easter bunny uh i don't know how the that easter happens, bunny is but... fertility probably yeah that makes you sense know, what, about, what about the candy and stuff though what's that supposed I to be i don't know oh okay well we don't know we're not experts on easter but maybe you guys are so you can tell us number one is coming from null verba 856 who says good friday tested better with the focus groups than shitty friday did <laughs> uh, which is a very funny comment but yeah it's like good friday i mean theologically i guess i get why it's good but it is kind of dark i'm not the first person to point this out obviously everybody's made that joke but it is it's just kind of a weird name for the day that your lord and savior died but i don't know yeah, yeah, I, I would want to be celebrated on the day that I died. Um, birthdays I wouldn't cold, want the day I died but... to be called Good either, Good Friday. I feel like I would have done right. something wrong <laughs> if that was the case. <laughs> but uh, I got yeah. my I got my pink on, you know, for the Easter thing. I, I don't know if I've worn this shirt before. It's pretty awesome. It says, everyone, lend me your Kennergy, which is a really great Barbie movie <laughs> shirt. But I feel like. Like obviously this is a play on the spirit bomb for from Dragon Ball Z. And I feel like like there's somebody out there who's probably done like an animation of like the crucifixion stuff in like a Dragon Ball Z style yeah. sort of powered up, you know, after three days. You know, I, I just I don't know why that is, <laughs> imagery comes to my mind, but um I guess like as a Christian, you know, you try to take it seriously, but now looking back on it, I don't know. It's just it's all just a very bizarre ritual to me, huh? What about you? Yeah, I, I completely agree. Um, you've got Friday where they're, he's dead or dies, Saturday where he's dead, not there, and then Sunday he comes back. It's like, yeah. what, what, you know, comes back? How do you, how do you know he came back? Right, assuming he was real, then we don't have any evidence of anybody gospels. else coming back. Yeah, we got the, we got firsthand accounts from the gospels. Don't you know? They're yeah, historical documents. Yeah, no. No. <laughs> well, real quickly, before uh, I forget here, um, we want to talk about next week's uh, question. So next week's prompt is going to be wrong answers only. What's your horoscope for tomorrow? Uh, which I think is a pretty fun one. Jim, what's your horoscope for tomorrow? What is your horoscope? Do you know? Uh, that's a good question. Um. I don't know. I'm a Capricorn, I'm uh, pretty sure. Uh, I think which, I'm a Libra. Like, Libra, okay. Capricorn I always thought was just kind of okay. It's just like a goat thing. It's not really super special or anything, but um, it's all kind of made up anyway. I guess I don't feel too badly about it. Uh, my horoscope for tomorrow is I hope I can uh, get a lot of money. I'll get a million dollars tomorrow, and I'll just have a really great time. That's my horoscope for me. So you can do what you want, but that's what I'm doing. Yeah, I. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I okay. don't know. Libra's Nothing? in balance. So, can I? Can I? Can uh, I yeah, give I'm you a horoscope? A <laughs> I'll give you a horoscope. Um, you will meet someone that you that reminds you of someone from your past tomorrow. Okay. You'll meet someone that reminds you of your past. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Could be very so, easy to do. I don't know if that's a horoscope or a fortune cookie, but I think I got the job Either done. Way. But folks, yeah. leave your horoscope uh, or a good horoscope. Funny horoscopes. We want to see them. And then next week, we'll read the top three comments that we think are the funniest. Um, so, yeah, like we were talking about, it is kind of Easter weekend. Um, when I was a kid growing up, Easter was... Definitely 
a thing that you celebrate, you know, you wear your Sunday best, you go to church and stuff. But we were a regular church going family. I, I always, uh, you know, got a kick out of how many people show up during the Easter service for our church. You know, a couple of churches I went to, it was always like four times the amount of people. And I really wonder, is it just yeah. like, you know, you go because you go at the same time as the other people that are going. So you're kind of tricking them into thinking you're there all the time, like a good Christian, or do you just feel guilty all of a sudden? Like what, 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 what you know, what's, I, I know some people are traveling and stuff, visiting family. Right. But what do you think? I don't know. We had uh, twice a year Catholics, you know, mm -hmm. Christmas and Easter were the only two times they'd show up at church. Yeah. So probably the same phenomenon, just, yeah, better things to do on a Sunday. And oh no, it's Easter. We got to go. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, I am looking forward to, I am going to go see my parents this weekend. I am looking forward to some good food because uh, my mom yeah. is always cooking some stuff up for Easter. So looking forward to that. But yeah, uh, maybe also if you want, folks, leave in your comments what you're planning on doing this Easter Sunday. Because I imagine a lot of you aren't really celebrating anything. <laughs> Um, be surprised if you did. Um, yeah, very, uh, very different times that we're living in now that we're out of that life. Uh, but Jim, you're, you're doing your scuba diving stuff. You host on atheist experience. Uh, you know, what else is new with you, Jim? What's going on? How much? Um, I'll be hosting atheist experience this Sunday. I'm very excited for Lich day. Yes. So yeah, we were kind of talking about that a little bit, whether Jesus is a zombie or a lich. Definitely lich territory for me, right? Yeah. Lich impl yeah. implies a certain majesty. Zombies kind of common, you know? Well, it's also ma magicians who, who die and resurrect become liches. Mm -hmm. uh, normal people just become zombies. So, you know, it, it, it fits with the lore better, I think. Yeah. If, if, I, he's, if he's a lich. Yeah, yeah. I feel like this is like, again, just like the oldest kind of atheist jokes about Easter. <laughs> you know, it's always <laughs> it's always some Dungeons and Dragons reference about, you know, whatever Jesus is getting up to in those in those crazy, crazy gospels. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's it's for some people. I know it's a really hard time of the year, right? Because yeah. you got family that you can't see because maybe they've kicked you out of your life or maybe you're not out yet. And there's a lot of pressure for you to like go to church and stuff and be a part of that. And some people feel like they have to go. Um, it's definitely a tough time uh, for a lot yeah. of folks, right? Well, I think it's like any religious holiday, you know, mm -hmm. Christmas as well. Um, or the family holiday that you do stuff with and do stuff with kids. And yeah, if your family is hostile to your being an atheist, that, that definitely puts a damper on the fun. Yeah, um, definitely. Definitely. I, I wonder, um, you know, there's all kinds of stuff out there saying, oh, lots of churches and stuff are shrinking every year. I really wonder if people are going to be noticing that this Easter as well, if it's going to be smaller than the year prior, right? And if it's just going to be keeping going that way for a lot of places. I know that's obviously not universally true for all churches, but from what I heard from folks that do go to church in my life, like it does seem like less and less people are just going in general, right? Yeah, and it, it's an interesting phenomenon. I'm not sure what all's behind it, and I don't know if anybody's actually done a study. Um, it could be the, the the internet, people actually seeing the arguments for God and realizing that it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. uh, it could also be the just absolute inhumanity coming out of the Christian right. You know, they're, they're some of the most hateful people on the planet, and people don't want to associate themselves with that. So yeah. It's true. It's true. Um, and, and uh, you know, obviously there's different flavors of Christianity, right? You know, not every single one is going to be the same. But, like, I feel like even, I don't know, at this part of my life, if I don't have to go and I don't have to because I'm an adult, I'm just not going to go. I'm not going to show support in any way because I, I don't feel justified in doing so. Like, I don't want to um, yeah. sort of normalize saying, like, hey, it's okay to drag people to a thing that they don't want to do and expressly don't believe in, right? Um, there's tons of stories of right. people feeling the pressure to do that. I, I definitely think that's wrong. I'm certainly not dragging any of my Christian friends over to the Atheist Community of Austin Library and saying, hey, you have to come uh, and play like Dungeons and Dragons with these right. people or whatever, you know? But um, 
Yeah. Yeah. Right. And who wants to be preached at anyway? I mean, if I'm going to sit and listen to an hour long lecture, it's going to be scientific or something I'm interested in, not someone telling me how awful I am. Yeah, for sure. So for sure. Uh, real quick, we do have a super chat already, which is awesome to see. Uh, thank you, folks. And uh, you can always give a super chat during the stream. And as long as it's YouTube appropriate, we will read it. It's from Critical Corey, who gave five pounds and said, love what you uh, that's pounds, right? That's pounds. I mean, I always I get my European oh, yes. currencies mixed up. I was just in Europe. I should know this. Well, I didn't see pounds. I saw euros. But anyway, love what you all do. Keep up the great work and gave two heart emojis. Thank you, Critical Corey. Um, and with that, actually, I think it's about time we get to some calls. Um, but before we do, Jim, we have to thank the patron of the week because every single week we always give a shout out to the folks who donate on the Patreon. Jim and I are both volunteers with the Atheist Community Austin. We don't get any of the money that you guys donate. When you donate to Truth Wanted, it's helped showing the organization, hey, this is a show that's worth supporting and uh you know making it happen every week so thank you guys for making this show happen this week's truth wanted patron of the week is going to be da -da -da, neil the 604 atheist Mwah. love you neil you are awesome i was literally cleaning my room the other day and i still have one of your stickers that you gave me at a conference <laughs> like probably four or five years ago now uh because i have more than one uh but yeah neil you're awesome thank you neil one of the first patrons of truth wanted if i recall um so has been donating pretty much its entire existence so and he's a really pretty awesome cool guy. guy love neil if you haven't yet you guys should check out neil 604 atheist i've done an interview on his channel uh jim you probably have too yep. he is a cool guy um but with that said jim i think we should get to the meat of the show let's talk to some yeah followers. absolutely okay let's do it this one is going to be um a bit of a different one that we'll start with first, because uh, I'm not sure, Emily, what you're talking about here. Emily from New England, you're live on Truth Wanted. Now, I'm kind of reading the description here, and I kind of want you to explain to me what you're trying to say. So, Emily, you're live on Truth Wanted. What's up? So, are you guys familiar with the De Outlaws Pass incident? The Outlaws Pass incident? I don't know that I am. Mm -mm. Okay, so um, the Dyatlov Pass incident was, um, it happened in the Soviet Union, and about nine hikers were doing this ski, this winter ski hike thing um, in the Ural Mountains, and yes. they all died. Yes, okay, I'm, um, I just Googled this while you're talking. I am familiar with this. Okay, so I think I can fill in the gaps, Emily. So um, you tell me if I'm getting it wrong. But the idea was basically these hikers were found right with their clothes off and they like had sunburns kind of all over their body and they were just like kind of out in the middle of the camp, right? That's what happened to them? Yeah, so the there's a lot of conspiracy theories about the Outlaws Pass. And for a while, the, the most reasonable explanation was an avalanche but there was a lot of problems with the idea of it being an avalanche which is why most people didn't believe it mm -hmm. and very recently i think in 2021 um thanks to frozen actually the uh, the let it go people um they were able to do some more research and avalanche still doesn't explain everything but it answer it, it makes more sense now wait, okay wait I, I heard about this so so i just want to give more context to what you're saying just so everybody understands so what happened was if i recall correctly so when they developed the movie frozen the disney movie um they did a lot of you know there's a lot of physics that goes into building some of the engines that they do for animating that movie and they actually use the physics engine that they made for using frozen and simulated snow to see if it could match up with the original site. That's right, Emily, right? That's, that's what happened. Yeah, that's what happened. Um, mm -hmm. they were, they, they were trying to see if, a, if it could trigger a small avalanche because there's all these problems, but I don't want to go into too much details unless you have specific questions because it, it, uh, it'll just take up the whole thing. But um, I guess th there's another explanation that answers a lot of questions that the avalanche theory doesn't answer, namely 
the injuries, mm-hmm. um, which is parachute mines. And it's a little bit more of a conspiracy theory, even though we know that the Soviet Union was testing parachute mines and we know that they were testing it in that area. Um, we don't have evidence that they were testing it that night. There's nothing that we can, you know, test the way we can test an avalanche. So it answers more questions, but there's less evidence for it, if that makes sense. Whereas yeah. the avalanche, we can test more, and so it has more concrete evidence of it being being possible, but it leaves a lot more questions. And what I'm finding is that even though I – my rational brain wants me to say probably an avalanche and that there's just a, a mystery with the injuries because they, they were, their injuries have um, a lot of deep internal damage, mm-hmm. very little soft tissue damage. So it's like having multiple broken bones and internal organ damage, but no bruising, like that kind of a thing. Yes. Um, and usually you don't see right. that. And, in in cases like this, but you would see it with parachute mines. But anyway, my brain kind of wants to go for the more conspiratorial mm-hmm. and I, of the parachute mines versus the more like the more likely avalanche is more likely than you know the military is testing secret weapons or something. You know what I mean? Yes. But I, I don't know why my brain is doing that. Or how to stop it from doing it in other circumstances? Well, I think it's a pretty natural thing, right? I think everybody kinds of has has wonders about kind of world events of what happens and stuff, right? Like, like I mean, talk about JFK for example, right? There's people that were there and and saw kind of what happened and and are just kind of confused and still come up with stuff. Same thing with like 9/11, right? There are people that were at Ground Zero who saw planes crash into the building and stuff and, and still have questions about how everything was orchestrated. I mean, like, I think it's just the natural human tendency to just assume something greater is happening um, than what is actually happening. Right. I mean, you see that across a lot of different kinds of stories. Uh, when I first heard about this, I, I understood now, and now I'm kind of, you know, I looked at the Wikipedia here. And I'm kind of refreshed on the details. You know, some of them died of hypothermia, so it made sense that, you know, when you get into a hypothermic state, right, you actually uh, have a sort of a kind of a paradoxical undressing, I think is what it's called. And so you actually end up mm-hmm. taking off some of your clothes instead of, um, you know, wanting to keep stuff on. Uh, so there's a reason why, you know, some of them were like naked while they were out there. And also they were really tan because they were out in the sun, you know, even in the snow, you can still definitely get a tan. Uh, the stuff that's kind of weird to me about this assembly is the injuries because according to this, you know, three of them were fatally injured, but six of them died of hypothermia, which is kind of interesting. It, it almost seems like there was a great injury that occurred and maybe some people tried to stay and, and try to help, uh, you know, or, or try to, you know, um, you know, do what they could with something happened. But I don't know. It might be one of those things where we never really truly know. Right. But it's kind of just fun to fill in the gaps. Uh, Jim, what do you think? Yeah, I think it's kind of fun to to play what if games. Um, you know, you're talking about a parachute mine. <clears throat> Why aren't you seeing shrapnel damage? Um, I would expect to see more bruising and broken bones from an avalanche than I would from a mine explosion. Um, if they're the kind of mines I'm thinking of, I, but don't do that though. I think you're thinking of something else. Parachute mines blow up in the air. They don't blow up near the people. And then, right, but there's still shrapnel, right? Yeah, but it, it doesn't. It blows up at a, at a different height and far enough away from people that it wouldn't. Yeah. Well, what what's the purpose of them? Because the ones I was looking at are naval mines dropped from the air. So, if the purpose is not to kill people on the ground, then what's the purpose of a parachute mine? They they kill people on the ground, but they don't. It, it it doesn't kill via shrapnel. It kills via like air pressure. Like it it it's like a like a yeah. It, it's it's not like shooting a bomb at somebody. It's it's a little bit. It kills in a different way. 
You're, it kills by concussion. That seems a little odd. Yeah. And and a little, I mean, a, a waste of explosives, honestly. Yeah, there is something to, to say there about, like, I wonder why they would just kill random people <laughs> out in the middle of the mountains, right? Unless they were all in on something really big. But, um, yeah, I've never heard of the individual actors being a part of something grand. Or maybe you have, though, Emily. You've always been reading more about this. It, I think it just happened to be an accident. The Ural Mountains are very um, the the idea behind the parachute mountains is that that's just where the Soviets did a lot of weapons testing because it's a okay. Remote. That makes sense. People mm. don't live there, and um, except for I think there's like a native tribe that lives there, but like they don't really, you know, and and also like it's the Soviet Union. One of their main tourist attractions is around a lake that's also like one of the most polluted lakes in the world. Like they, <laughs> they, they test things all the, all the time in pretty populated areas. But this, this particular one is just where they test a lot of weapons and the hikers went hiking there. Yeah. I I'm seeing uh, one of the speculations talking about the parachute mines. I'm also seeing on here. I remember like seeing a history channel, you know, like documentary about this, about how supposedly like a Yeti <laughs> could have come in and done something, right? I mean, there's so many different stories and ideas about what happened. I'm also seeing here that, that according to the Russian government, they are either saying it was the result of an avalanche, a slab avalanche, which I guess is a kind of ice avalanche, and a hurricane. And they don't say that it was murder or anything else involved like that. So they're they're kind of going a completely natural uh, weather phenomenon. And they opened it up. They, they declared this again in it says 2019 and in 2020. That's so weird. Cause this happened in like the fifties, right? Fifties or sixties. Very weird that they would open that up again. I guess, I guess it's like the Jack the Ripper stuff. You know, people just want to know, right. They want to get some closure on some of these crazy events. So very interesting. That's a trip down memory lane for me, Emily. That's what I'm struggling with the most, though, is that, like, my rational brain is, like, it's probably an avalanche. It's probably an avalanche. And, but there's, I guess I'm wondering, like, when it becomes conspiracy thinking and when it becomes just, like, I'm asking questions. Do you know what I mean? Yes, like, I think when, I do. When do you become, um, hmm? Okay, Here, here's what I would say to this. Um, first of all, conspiracies do happen. Right. Anybody that says otherwise has not studied enough history. It, it definitely happens. Levels of conspiracy, though. I mean, that's going to be a bit different, right? Usually the scale is quite different from what a lot of people think. But like government conspiracies do occur, right? We, we, uh, we did a whole segment on this show talking about MK Ultra, right? And the effects of that, which was definitely oh, yeah. a real thing where the government of the U.S. government was drugging random American citizens and also some Canadian citizens. Um, but the reason why we know about that is because there were leaks about that. Well, not leaks about it. There was, there was an inquiry about it. And then it, it went to a whole Senate testimony and stuff. And then so more reporters got in on it. And then, you know, more information was released to the public, right? So we know about stuff like that because we have a lot of evidence. We have a lot of records for it. The problem with something like this is that unless we have better evidence to show things, like Jim brought up a good point. You know, I imagine a bomb is probably going to have some residue somewhere, right? That's something that's going to tie to it, unless we can really say one way or the other. I'm not sure if it's warranted to be able to say, oh, this is the site of a military test. I mean, and it very well could be true, but we still have to work on something that could be warranted, right? Something that could at least guide us to that conclusion rather than just pure speculation, because otherwise anybody can just speculate on stuff, right? I don't know. I think that's kind of a good baseline, though. Uh, Jim, what would you say? Yeah, I, I was trying to read a little bit while you were talking, because mm -hmm. I was curious about this this mine thing. And the only thing I, I see is it's it's a shrapnel mine, but they think the pressure wave from it collapsed some of the tents. I'm not seeing where they think it damaged any humans, because I'm kind of thinking that's not. A, a overpressure can happen and can do damage, but I don't know of an overpressure in open air like that, how that would happen. That just doesn't make any sense to me. So if yeah. it was a mine, I, I still see that. Um, 
there's a really good book called Deep Survival that talks about what happens to people in their heads when they get into survival situations and what helps them to survive. And people do stupid stuff. Um, they'll drop their survival gear thinking that they'll get to wherever they're going faster because it's, they're not lugging it around. Um, but they're, they're completely lost. So they still need their survival gear. They just don't have it anymore. And I have exposure. Yeah. Um, people can panic. Uh, so it, it, it's hard to say. You're under a lot of stress. So a fight could easily break out. Um, Jim, what do you think of Emily's? Their heads. What do you think of Emily's question though? Because Emily's wondering where's the line? Where 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 do you get to say okay now we can start considering conspiracies versus other kinds of explanations? Right? How do how do we how do we it's get like to that else, point? When you have sufficient when you have sufficient evidence. Yeah. Right. Um, so one of the things with conspiracy theories is who benefits. Um, so could it be that the Soviet military was testing something? Sure. Is the Soviet Union known for covering things up? Yeah. But what are they covering up here? I mean, it was done in the 1950s, right? This, this is, event was 1950s. So what's, what's the benefit to them now? Uh, other well, I think, than I think the benefit is embarrassment, but yeah, I, th I think that would be it, right? I think the the motivation would be look, they're doing these testing of these weapons, and they accidentally killed civilians. So rather than admit that the you know the the Russian government killed civilians, they would say that it's the result of you know uh, a natural event or something, right? Right, but here they did another investigation in 2019. <clears throat> Not sure why they would want to do that, but. Yeah, it's still possible, but do we have sufficient evidence other than it's in in line with what the Russian government's been known to do? You know, that you yeah. need, I think you need something more. And also you have to be willing to go, we don't know. They Emily, go ahead. They actually testing parachute mines at in that area. They just claimed that they weren't doing it that night. So the Soviet military, we know that they were doing it in the Ural Mountains. They just said they weren't doing it when that incident happened. But Avalanche is probably most likely right. I just don't know why my brain is having such a hard time letting go of, of the other answer. Yeah, uh, you just keep going over it until you convince yourself one way or the other or just settle on, we'll never know. Yeah, I'll, and that's I'll the, say the other option, right? I'll say this: When it comes to things like, like when we talk about MK Ultra, right? Again, like there were eyewitness testimonies and stuff, but like when people really were getting serious was when that paperwork comes out, right? Even with military operations and stuff like this, even if it's just training, there's going to be some paperwork involved. There's going to be some stuff that can come out to demonstrate that. I think if we had some of that, then it might make that conclusion more reasonable. Um, but I think also there's just a human need to just like want to fill the gaps and want to fill the holes, even when we don't know stuff, which is why a lot of people believe in God, you know? Uh, but besides that, I mean, when it comes to stuff like this, sometimes people just want to believe more. And maybe that's where you're at. Emily. maybe it's like, Oh, I just think that there's something more to this because I agree. There's a lot of like weird details about this stuff. Right. That's why so many people are fascinated. I mean, geez, this, the Wikipedia article alone is, gigantic <laughs> um and obviously people have been talking about it for years there's a reason why they opened it back up right um but i think i don't know at this point unless there's even an even bigger cover-up happening which it could be i wouldn't say that it's not impossible uh it's just that it's not the most reasonable thing to believe and that's just i don't know it's one of those kind of facts of life it's just one of those things to meditate on i guess you know and try to you know hope that we don't let our emotions get to us hope we don't let our our uh, our wants and desires, you know, overtake what we want to be real. So yeah, Emily, I wish I could help you more. It's just kind of, it's hard to do, right? It's, it's like, man, I want this to be true, but you know, all things point to maybe it not being true. Yeah. yeah. It feels like I just need to deconstruct it. Like I did with religion because it feels like, like I just like when I was hanging on to religious things, 
I don't know, it feels kind of similar to want to hang on to knowing, even if the knowing doesn't have the evidence. Yes. Yeah, that's definitely a great insight. I think a lot of people who come from uh, backgrounds where they get really into conspiracy um, often do a similar kind of thinking that religious communities sometimes do, where the thinking is kind of backwards, right? Like I didn't like rationalize myself into Christianity. I was baked into the culture, right? Like that was fed to me before I could even fully think about it. And with a lot of conspiracy theories, right? People are getting those ideas through like Facebook memes and telegram chats and stuff before they can really digest what it would mean because maybe they already have biases and motivations, right? Like we already have biases towards the Russian government, for example, we can, I'm sure you and I can both point to examples where they've definitely done shady stuff. I mean, most, most world powers have, right? So, you know, there might be something that points us to wanting to think that that could be uh, a possibility. And again, it's always okay to be open about it, but at the end of the day, if you're going to, I don't know if you're going to really testify to what could be the most likely explanation. I think that's where you have to hang your hat and say like, look, um, it's probably more natural causes than it is something else. Right. Cause we just don't have anything else to support it other than, um, you know, a plausible idea. Right. Um, so I don't know. I hope I'm helping you here, Emily. Um, I guess I think I just need to do more thinking but thank you for talking it out with me um i appreciate that yeah absolutely absolutely and that's what we're here to do is talking through some of this stuff and you know what you caught me off guard with this because this is not one i've thought about for a really long time maybe if i was more prepared we can go over some of the deeper parts of it but uh it is definitely an interesting mystery emily we'll go ahead and let you go but thanks for calling the show and uh hope to hear from you again Jim, what'd you think of that call? That was a good call. I thought so too. I'm just not up on it. I, it the mine idea seems really weird. Um, a mine that kills by overpressure in open air? <clears throat> that doesn't make any sense. Um, I mean, a mine going off and causing tends to blow over and thing like that, that makes more sense. And just because the Russians weren't dropping parachute mines that night, you know, you don't go walking through uh, any place where aircraft is dropping ordnance just because they've stopped. It's still dangerous because there's unexploded ordnance there. So it could still be a mine, uh, more a mine that went off for whatever reason. Um, but mines destroyed by shrapnel. So I don't know, none of the bodies seem to have shrapnel wounds. So it's, you know, hard to say. Yeah, there's a lot of different explanations for this one, you know, uh, or, 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 or speculations, I should say. Um, so it really does get your mind going about what could have possibly happened here. And uh, I don't know, the best thing I could say is you just got to take everything in one at a time and just really think about what's going to be most likely of course extraordinary things do happen sometimes but yeah. you know uh we can't just say oh i just i thought it was aliens i think aliens came down and just zapped them right like okay maybe that could have been the case but why would you believe that over like an avalanche or something right it's just like right. we gotta we gotta go with more naturalistic explanations or things that we know have occurred in the past first before we can jump to stuff that hasn't right at least in my opinion, but what um, do I know? I'm just oh, a calling show host. When I was a, a kid in California, we had a wind that was it knocked fences down and did all kinds of damage, but it was only like half a mile wide um, and only a, a mile long or something like that. It was just it, it, it was just a burst of wind mm -hmm. and there was damage done. So it could have been something along those lines. Stick uh, with aliens. I think I'm yeah, going to stay with that. Is good. Yeah. yeah. Is good. I, maybe they were transported from the Bermuda Triangle, you know, yeah. 
yeah, let's let's get even bigger with this. I don't know. We can go to a lot of places. Um, but folks, before we keep moving on and I'll take the next caller, real quickly, I gotta tell you guys, if you want to email the show, uh, you definitely should. We have an email, it's truth at atheist-community.org. You can also reach out to the AC at TV at atheist-community.org and see what's going on, on our website, of course, at atheist-community.org. And uh, as always, we are reading those super chats, so uh, we might get to some more here. Uh, check to see if we got some more in just a minute. Nope, not more right now. But if you send one in, we'll definitely read it, as long as it's YouTube appropriate. Lastly, before we keep going, I need to thank the awesome, wonderful crew that helps put up with me most of the time, uh, almost every week. And these folks really help make the show happen. There is a reason why we do this crew camp, and it's because the show does not exist without them. So thank you to the crew for making it work. Um, okay, with that done, let's go ahead and get to our next caller. Um, okay, we got two really good ones. Um, I'm going to save one of them for next, but I am going to talk to Critical Corey first. Critical Corey calling in from the UK and it also gave a super chat earlier. Thank you again, Critical Corey, for donating. What's going on? Hi, yeah. Uh, thank you so much for taking my call. Hope, hopefully you two are doing well. Um, it's nearly 1 p. Uh, sorry, 1 a.m. for me, so bear with me. I'm pretty tired. Yeah, that's why I took you first, because I saw you were in the UK, and it's like, you know, he probably wants to go to bed. So let's get to you first, <laughs> yeah. and then maybe we can get to our next caller here. But yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so um, like, so I've kind of always been atheist. Like, I, I never really thought it was real, kind of, you know, with Santa Claus and stuff like that. Um. So, and I don't really have much exposure to theists. Um, I've only recently kind of started get, getting into this world. Um, so, it, it, like, in, in having discussions with them, a lot, a lot of the time, they just seem to, like, reject things that we absolutely know are true. Um, and I imagine, because obviously you, you've probably spoken to a lot of them, um, if you had kind of any insight to, like, why they seem to be unwilling to accept things that we know are true well here's the thing critical Corey. you're from the uk okay i didn't go to the uk but i did go to europe just a few weeks ago and in general you guys treat your churches like museums <laughs> for the most part yeah. at least the ones i see right like there's just not as much of the same kind of culture that you see particularly in the u.s right and obviously you know there's you know religious fundamentalism and other kinds of you know interesting ideas to say the least all around the world but in america in particular and i grew up in waco texas mind you like it's just the culture right especially in a world like pre-internet right where your source of news is probably going to be your local paper or whatever is going to be your favorite channel right like a lot of people just aren't as well read they just don't know about other cultures as much right especially in america right where we don't get to go to other countries as much we don't get to experience other things and so being in such an insulated part of the world and then further insulated in these religious communities, you just don't get to be exposed to as much ideas. I mean, I didn't meet an atheist, at least one that I knew for the first time until I was at least middle school, if not high school, right? Everybody I knew in my life was Christian or if they weren't, if they were like a Muslim or Jewish or something, it was usually like one or two kids at my school. You know, everybody else pretty much yeah thought the same way I did. And when you when you grew up in that, it's just kind of normalized, right? Especially stuff like, you know, what I imagine is kind of weird to you, like young earth creationism and stuff. That was that was just very commonplace. Evolution denial and other kinds of science denial was just kind of the norm where I was from. So yeah, I, I think it just comes down to culture for a lot of people, right? Um, I'm thankful that I got an education later in life and, you know, uh, was able to kind of work through a lot of that stuff. But a lot of people don't have that kind of privilege either, right? Um, so there is something to be said about life experiences, yeah. I think, that definitely contributes to belief. Go ahead. No, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, but it, it just, like, it seems weird that, like, because a lot of the time, like, when I talk to them in, like, YouTube comments, they'll say, like, mm -hmm. oh, you don't have any evidence for, like, say, evolution, for example. Um, yeah, yeah. And then I'll send them a, a link to a peer-reviewed study that proves evolution is real and happens. And yeah. Then, like, they either say, oh, that's just a theory, so it's not true, or they just say, nah. -uh. And, and it, yeah. it just seems weird to me that, like, because, like, for me, it's obviously like, you know, if, if they sent me evidence that would make me question my beliefs, I'd be like, okay, cool. I need, I need to sure. consider this stuff. 
But you want to know something critical, Corey? Right. They've never gone come to a conclusion about their beliefs from a peer-reviewed study before, right? Like that's just not how they gain knowledge a lot of times, how a lot of people gain knowledge. It's just not, you know, um, yeah. a common way for people to cite stuff, right? Like, uh, again, figures of authority in people's lives, pastors and stuff, and and other uh, more powerful people in our country are also religious, right? Almost almost every sitting president, pretty much all of them are openly Christian in some way, right? And then we also got a lot of other um, officials in the Senate and stuff like that that are also openly Christian, and also actively parrot ideas that people have, including some of those prejudices, uh, just to get those kinds of votes. So there's a lot of yeah. built into the culture here that, uh, that that really gets those ideas going i think that's why you see such a difference particularly in the u.s right obviously again i'm speaking about one singular country but like let's be real we get a lot of the, well a lot of the weirdos come from the u.s right a lot of the strangest beliefs too and it's because we just don't have that same um i don't know that same kind of culture to talk about some of those ideas in the ways that you want to talk about right like through scientific inquiry or through peer review citation right well, we we don't make decisions from a, a rational point of view all the time. Yeah. And there's a study, and I, I got to go find it, where you, when you, you damage the emotional centers of the mind, people become unable to make a decision. They know they're hungry, but they can't decide to eat. So we need that emotional connection. We're more persuaded by stories than we are facts in many cases. So all of these things combine, and also you're attacking somebody's identity. So that that gives them a stake in being right when it's their identity. And facts yeah. don't always convince people anyway, right? Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's fair enough. I mean, yeah. It's just, and like I say, it just seems so weird to me, so alien. So I appreciate giving me, you, you guys give me that perspective. Yeah, of course. And, you know, there oh. is a bias in our perspective too, Critical Core, because there is something called the third person effect. And it's this idea that when we describe how other people come to their beliefs, we oftentimes cite more sociological forces, right? Or more outside forces than when we typically talk about our own beliefs, right? We like they, they've done studies about this where they talk about, um, you know, how advertising affects people and how advertising affects people's buying decisions and stuff. And a lot of people, um, even though it's demonstrated like, look, more people bought this thing because of this advertisement, when they get asked, okay, why did you buy this thing? You, we tend to, play down those forces, right? That we don't want to admit, oh, we saw this thing on TV or we saw, um, you know, some other kind of web ad about it. And I think that's got to be true for a lot of our own, particularly rig religious beliefs as well. When it's when it's just out there so much and you just kind of absorb it without really thinking about it, it, it really can affect us. And obviously it still affects me today because I'm still, you know, living in the culture that I grew up in mostly. So, yeah, it's it's a lot of forces at work. It's never going to be just one thing, right? Yeah, yeah. All righty. Um, well, cool. Any, any other uh, yeah. comments or something? No. No. Yeah, that that's perfect. Yeah, I just I just wanted to get so, some kind of perspective on it, and you, you've done a great job of that. Thank you. Thank you, Critical Corey. I like your call. It was short but sweet. You know, uh, five minutes there. But hey, we'll take it. Uh, I, I particularly enjoyed that. What do you think, Jim? Yeah, it, it's always an interesting question as to why people don't pay more attention to facts. And, you know, it's the old salesman adage, people buy on emotion and justify with facts later. So. Yeah, but then there's also this idea of fact, right? Because, like, if you grow up with just the fact, for example, that the earth is... 6,000 years old or that humans were created by God. I mean, like you're, there's can be a privileging of information that occurs that normally wouldn't occur otherwise. Right. And so that may lead some sources like the Bible, for example, to be more heavily um, sort of touted as a source of truth when it really doesn't have as much of a right to be right. Um, you know, some people just aren't as well equipped in knowing how we have 
the knowledge gaining methods that we do today and why they work and why they can be reliable. And they have their shortcomings too. A lot of people point out the shortcomings of science all the time, um, but it's still going to be, I feel like something that gets us closer to the truth than just, oh, whatever this thing says that never changes that we always have to listen to, right? Yeah. And science is never more than a percentage of sure. It's never 100% sure. So yeah. That, yeah, of course. Uh, there's a lot to be said about the philosophy of science there. But this next call, I think we might have some fun with. Uh, buckle up, folks. It is the one and only Daniel from Canada who is calling in back on Truth Wanted. Daniel from Canada, what is happening? Uh, not much. I just thought I'd call in and um, talk about um, – well, I sent you some pictures, first of all, and uh, of uh, – the little aliens on uh, Mars, because uh, that's when I first called you, right? It was, it was yes, <laughs> yes. We talked about the bug, the bug beings on Mars, Daniel. And um, you, you, you sent me some stuff before, but recently this week in my email address, you did send me some pictures, and we're not gonna hold back on these. We would like to show other folks this too. We got the crew to set some of that up, so maybe they could put some of these pictures on screen here. And uh, audio listeners, I'll have to describe what we're looking at. But uh, crew, whenever you're ready, if you want to put some of these pictures up, maybe we can take a look at them. So, Daniel, what what convinced you in these pictures in particular that this was definitely evidence of Martians? Okay, we got a picture on screen right now. This is from the billion pixel view from the Curiosity at Rock Nest, uh, and it's also been white balanced. So this is, um, I think, a a picture of a picture. That you sent us of that so yeah please tell us about that it, it's a screenshot from uh, okay. roger in kansas city's video where what roger did was he put his camera in front of his monitor and he just uh brought up the nasa site the billion pic pixel site and uh, he just put his camera so he could focus in on the picture better than blowing it up i mean then by enlarging it uh, on the on the screen and um, and so, well, yeah, what, me, you see a little. It, it, I'm not sure which picture you're going to show first. We got it on the screen right now. Um, yeah. So I would recommend if like, if you do want to see what we have on the screen, um, just make sure you're watching it on a computer with muted audio. Um, yep, yep, you know, yep. we generally don't recommend uh, having the stream on at the same time with the call. But if you want to kind of follow along, but yeah, we have the one that says. Billion pixel view from the Curiosity rock nest at the top. And I'll be honest, I don't know where's the where's the alien in this picture. I don't see the alien. No, not in that picture. I'm just showing you. That's the site. That's the site. Okay, so this is just the site. Okay. I just want to show where what the site was. It's the okay. other pictures. Okay. But okay. Let, me, let me go back to your to the method to the methodology. It's a camera set in front of us monitor that is displaying the picture. Is that correct? Display, yeah, displaying the NASA website. Why in the world would you do it that way? Yeah, I, I was, I was, I was going to ask you about this because why, <laughs> why would you not get a, a, a screen grab for us, like an actual screenshot? Because this is like going to make it way harder, right? No, 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 no. He, he did that because he wanted to focus in on the pictures better. Because if, okay. you, if you just enlarge the picture, it's going to pixelate. But that's not going to accomplish that, right? Because you got a billion pixel image that you're taking a picture of with fewer pixels than that right. billion. You're taking a picture of a picture, and that's going to have a lower resolution, right? Yeah. It, it's just a stupid way to do it. I, I don't think so. I don't think so. So we, one of us is a software engineer who's actually dealt with pictures and there's no way you can show anything with that because you're losing all your detail from the camera. You're using a low resolution camera to take a low resolution picture of a high resolution shot. Do you see how that doesn't translate to anything useful? I'm not a photo expert, Jim. Okay, I'm telling you, it's stupid, 
right? I'm waiting. What, what pixels is your camera? All right, let's. I think uh, we do have a bunch of other pictures. So maybe if we go on to the next picture, we can kind of get a look at what we're doing with here because, you know, we already got the pictures here. We might as well take a look at what we got, right? Right. Uh, All yeah. right, let's go to this next one here. So we got a rock on the screen here. Do you see the picture that we chose here? Daniel, you got a, a, a screen on your side? Uh, I'm still waiting. Yeah, yeah, I'm still waiting. <laughs> okay, yeah, we do have a bit of a delay from the call to the stream, so that's totally fine. I think it's going to be the next in the sequence of the pictures that you showed me. I'm going to be honest, this just looks like a rock, but I guess I guess I can kind of see there's kind of a blue tint to it. Maybe is this supposed to be like an alien body? Is this like a torso in this picture? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm still waiting, sorry. Okay, that's fine. Well, you got the pictures. I mean, you got all of them here, yeah, so. I know, because I sent you uh, four. Um... One looks like he's standing inside the middle of like a rock. Uh huh. And it's got like he's got like a white face. You see like two eyes. You see a mouth. You see his shoulders. Like you just see from his waist up. And he's he's okay. That the picture you're showing first is uh, to me looks like a piece of uh, technology that's just dry that's just rotting out in the in the ground. It's just like oh that's technology this one this 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 blue looking well, look, rock right here How, why why would you say it's technology well look closely where where roger where roger's mouth the hand is where his mouse you see the little hand near yeah the i see that i see that just look directly above the hand okay. that to me looks like gear almost like a gear like gear. Gear? that just looks like a shadow to me i don't see a gear yeah <laughs> The, the resolution is so bad, I have no idea what it is. Do you have a link to the, the actual site that's on the billion pixels? That would be actually better. Yeah, but it doesn't work anymore. The NASA site doesn't work anymore. Suddenly, five years ago, you can't use it anymore. They, they don't, you, you can't see this stuff anymore. Right. I remember you calling me and you told me about yeah. this and you think you think it's because some of these pictures were revealing stuff that we weren't supposed to see. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. okay, now you've got another one. That's the picture I'm talking about. He's got like okay. see like oh, sorry, you went back. If you could put that third picture back up and uh we can take a look at. It. There we go. Okay, we got it on screen on our end. So don't worry about what you see. Okay. You see Again, you see Roger's little mouth, the hand, the mouse. Yep. Uh, the, see a mouse on there. Uh, yeah. Right. That's right above it. Is that is a? It looks like some sort of tool that he's pressed against. You see a black. You see like it looks like he's almost like a black shirt on or something. And you see like a white face. It's almost that's what I thought was an insect. It almost looked like a, a bug type face. Do you think that? Do you think that's an, like a creature that's alive? Like you think that's like a a mobile moving creature? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I think it just looks like a rock, I, Daniel. I don't know. That doesn't look like a creature to me. The yeah, the resolution once again is so bad. I have no idea. I would yeah, expect I mean, better resolution off the the billion. And if it's not there, then it's not there. I mean, but the way you've done it makes no sense to me, right? You're, you're taking uh, at best a 4K picture of a billion pixel picture. You lose so much de detail. Uh, you, you can't really zoom in anymore. It's just a really bad way to determine anything. I just don't see it. You don't see anything. I, I see rocks. But I, I don't see enough detail to, to draw any conclusions from. It, it kind right? of, it, I get better detailed pictures off of my 10-year-old camera than I do that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a funny-looking rock. I'll, get, I'll give you this, Daniel. It's a funny-looking rock, you know? It is a funny-looking rock. It, it's a funny-looking rock, but, like, unless we have – I mean, you know, if we can get, like, a GIF of it moving or something, at least, if we're just looking at a static image of Mars – where we're seeing a bunch of rocks, I'm just going to assume it's a bunch of rocks. I don't know why I would assume anything different, right? Because they put that orange, they put that uh, pinkish orange filter over everything. But 
Oh, this is a close-up. This, this is a screenshot of a close-up, like zooming in, like a huge, huge picture. It's not a screenshot. No, yeah, that's not a thing. It's, it's not a, a picture of a screen. Yeah. A picture of a screen is not the same thing as a screenshot. No, no, I made a screenshot of Roger's video. Right, but, okay, so... He, the original the video screenshot? is not showing screenshots. The original video is him showing a camera, right? Him showing the site. Yeah, the picture of the site. The, uh, the, and you can move around. You could take uh, the billion pixel that NASA site. It's interactive, right? You can move, move around and go to all parts of it. It's a huge, huge picture. I get you. I get you. But it's to Jim's point, right? If you took a 4K version of Titanic, right? And then I recorded that off of a VHS tape and then I give it to you. You're not going to see the 4 you're not going to see Titanic in 4K. You're going to see whatever my VHS copy of Titanic looks like, right? That that's kind of what's happening here with this method of showing it to us. Uh I mean like at best if you're going to show us a video, I mean maybe if we could you could download it from the ori original source or something, but like, you know, this way is just you can't really show much, man. It's just it's just kind of pixelated rocks so far. Daniel, you there? I see you're still on the line, Daniel. If you're there with us, I'm gonna put you back in the queue. And I do want to keep talking with you because we do have like three more pictures. Um, cause I, you know, I was hoping you could explain some of this to me. Yeah. You know, you've been, you've been calling into this show for quite a while now with your various Mars claims. And this is the first time we're getting to look at it together on screen. I want to kind of have that moment with you, but I gotta say, I'm not, I'm not super impressed so far. I thought you'd be bringing something, bringing some heat to the table, but this kind of just looks like, I don't know any other picture of rocks I've seen on Mars, Jim. What do you think of this so far? I don't think you, you're enjoying it as much yeah, as I am. Um, it, there's just no way to tell what it is with the way they took the picture. Putting a camera on a screen is is especially a high res screen you know, or high res picture that just uh, makes no sense. Yeah, well, I listen, this is the first time we're going over like Mars footage, like on the years we've been doing this show. I don't think we've ever actually shown it on screen here. So I'm, I'm celebrating the milestone for what it is, even if it's, um, you know, less than what I'd hoped for in terms of yeah. quality. But uh, I see that, Daniel, you should be ready now. I'm going to bring you back into the queue. Okay, Daniel, you're back with us on the line. Can you hear us? Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm. I, you guys are. You guys are focusing too much on the way Roger did this. We're just trying to show what NASA doesn't want people to see because you can't go to the site anymore. You got. I want you to go to. If you go to Roger's video and and click on the link to the NASA site, you can't do it anymore. They shut it down. Why did they do that? You think that's just a coincidence? Well, if it's a billion pixel image, that takes up a lot of hosting resources. Yeah. And it's probably, you know, like like NASA government websites change out their web pages for stuff all the time. I don't know if it has to be because they have to hide something, right? I mean, like if they really didn't want people to see what they were doing, why even release it in the first place? I, I think that makes the least sense to me. They they don't really have a reason to even just show everybody other than just, I don't know, it's cool and they want to like educate people about science and get people excited about science for funding and stuff right i don't know it, it, it it's just I, I i get that oh they took this thing down but maybe i'm sure there's maybe an explanation somewhere like have you actually looked up if they've given a reason why yeah i tried to um i i, I wrote them and asked them and they never gave me an answer okay well i don't know i don't know what to tell you daniel i i don't I, if this is if this is the best that we've got to work with I got to say, I was hoping for a little bit more spice, but uh, maybe real quickly, we'll just go through the other pictures, right? Just so we gave you a fair share, because we only got like three more. Uh, crew, if you could put okay. that next one on the screen, if you could, and um, we can go from there. Okay. All right. Here's another one. Look, This one looks like the moon almost. This looks like a little uh, little statue or something. I could see. I could see how you could put a face to that. You see that, Jim? 
Yeah, it looks like any other rock that's got that's big leaf it's got a little like face stuff. on there. I see a little face. All right, Jay, what are we looking at with this one? Uh, this is like the fourth one in the one you sent us. Um, I'm just waiting for it to come up. Um, I think it's the one. Uh, yeah, like a little. It's like a little rock pillar in the middle, sticking up straight, almost. Yeah, and you see like a black, like a hole, like it's almost uh, behind behind them. There's a black. Um, uh, it looks like a, a cave entrance, almost, or something like an entrance. A cave entrance. Well, I don't, I don't see it. I don't know if I see a cave entrance. Um. Well, it, the picture is kind of close up. You can't see it. But I think that's okay. the one. It's kind of got like a pointy head. It does kind of. It looks like it's got a little bow. It looks like a little person with a bow on its head. Oh, okay. Oh, I see. This is a different. One. Okay. No. Yeah. If you look closely, you'll see an attachment. You, he's <laughs> he's got a little attachment to his mouth, to his face, and it looks to me it looks like like a construction worker, like behind a uh, uh, um, a jackhammer or something like that. He's. There's, it's very interesting. Standing, it's very interesting. Standing, you think they they let a lot of aliens in front of the camera. You'd think they'd tell them to go away <laughs> so they're not getting in the shot, right? I don't know. Like, like, what? Let me ask you this, Daniel. Why couldn't this be rocks? Like, why, why is it not possible that this could be rocks? Because it looks doesn't look natural. The, 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 that little shape doesn't look it, it, can, it doesn't look like rocks around it. It looks different to me. It, it conflicts with nature. It doesn't look the same. Look, if you look closely at the guy, I, I, I challenge you to get a magnifying glass and really examine it closely. Like, yeah, these I mean, are but again, a magnifying glass would be the worst way to do it, right? Yeah, Jim. <laughs> in, 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 uh, in the Cuban Missile Crisis. Do you remember the Cuban Missile Crisis? How they looked at the pictures? They flew over Cuba. And, and they took the best pictures possible. And Why are you comparing 1960s fo photographic that's, technology that's also different. They used, they, with that's something like, in the, the, the 20th century? Right? You know there's lens. a difference between 8 billion pixel and a, a 1960s cameras, right? Yeah. No, no, I know. I'm just saying that they use, they use magnifying glasses to look, to look closely at the pictures instead of they could only blow them up so big then they blew yes. up. Yes. It's the only technology because, they had. Yeah, that was We have film. much better ways to do that. Right. Yeah. We're talking about digital images, Daniel. Like this is this is so different. Like I realize that. If, if we if we want the best looking photo, we wouldn't want to use a magnifying glass. Like enlarging it would be one of the best ways to do it, depending on the file format, right? If we if it's in a format yeah. that's saved in a way that we could safely enlarge it like not necessarily a JPEG, but like a uh, vector graphic or something. I don't know if they would take yeah. pictures that way, but point is like, we have way better ways of like zooming in on it than a magnifying glass. So I, I have no idea why you would want to use a magnifying glass with this. Because it's the best way to see it because you can only- No, it's not. It's a really best way to see it is take the image, use a viewer and blow that up. Not yeah. to use, because like all you're looking at is the pixels on the screen, not the pixels of the image. Yeah, if anything, if you're, looking, if you're looking at it through a magnifying glass, you're just kind of blurring the image a bit and you're kind of, <laughs> it, would, it would kind of make it look more like a person or, or, or an animal or something, because it's, it's just gonna be smudgier in your vision. Well, when you look at that, that picture, you can actually see the, the lattice work on the, the LCD screen. That's all you're going to see when you grab a magnifying glass. You're going to look at your screen under a magnifying glass, not a blow up of the picture. Yeah, it looks like it looks like in some of these pictures that maybe the original person that you took the screen grabs from was using a camera on a computer screen. Like that's kind of what it looks like. Um, so, yeah, I don't know what to say, Daniel. It's not. It's I. I. I I, I like it when you call in. I like hearing your ideas, but I'm not impressed today. I thought I thought I was going to see something a little bit more than this. That last one was kind of like a person, but it also kind of looked like a rock. Like, is there any one of these that doesn't at least kind of look like a rock that we can say, oh, yeah, that's definitely a person? 
Like I don't go outside and take pictures of animals and be like, I'm not sure if this was a bird or a rock or maybe it was a dog. You know, it's like, I know I just take pictures of them. And it's like, oh, okay, that's a dog. Like, is there any one of these that we can say, okay, yeah, unquestionably, this has to be, you know, an alien or something. I think so. <laughs> I just look, I just look at it. I think so. Like I, I don't know. I'm, I'm skeptical but, then. But I say a chance, Dan. People look at Camelback, Camelback Mountain in Phoenix and see a camel. Go ahead, Daniel. Right? Give it a chance. When you're on your own sometimes, just look at it closely. And yes, use a magnifying glass. It helps you see detail. I'm not Why do I want to see the details of my screen? That's all a magnifying glass is going to give you. It's not. Uh, no, it's it, not true. Yes. You'll see. You'll see a little more detail. One one of us knows how to actually do images on a computer, and the other one doesn't. Who am I going to believe? Okay, Jim, we got to believe you, of course. Yeah, because I actually do this stuff. I've done this stuff. I'm a software engineer. And you're literally just blowing up your screen and looking at the, the individual pixels on the screen when you get a magnifying glass. You're not blowing up the picture. Well, that's, the, that's what Zoom is for. Yeah. And listen, Daniel, I, listen, you got to give me some credit, okay? How many people have you talked to have put pictures you've sent them on a live show for everybody to see. I've never done that for anybody. Uh, well, maybe actually, maybe once or twice we've done that for a few people, but it's very rare. Okay, Dan, I'm giving you a chance here. I'm letting the jury decide, yeah. the audience decide here, and they're not on your side on this one, man. You gotta, you gotta. If you're gonna come in with this, you gotta bring the heat. No. I want to see if you really want to try this again with me, or if you want to send me a video or a picture, probably preferably a picture, please. Send me the highest quality stuff you got. I want to see them aliens, Daniel. I don't want to say, oh, that could be a rock. I want to say that is an alien hanging out on Mars. Like that's 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 what I'm looking for, man. Because otherwise, we can talk about whether it's a rock or not all day. You know what I mean? It's not going to move the needle for me much. Yeah, I understand. All right, Daniel. No, uh, no thank well, you. No, thanks for showing up. I appreciate that. Thanks. Thanks a lot. I, I appreciate I appreciate you being a good sport, Dan, because you know we talk we 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 get into some tiffs sometimes. You and I, not me, you in particular, but you know, like you know, a lot of people are like, "Why do we give you at the time of day?" I see the comments on that. It's because I think if I if somebody's going to show me that something there's some aliens on Mars, you know, I want it to be you, Daniel. I want you to bring me that revelation. I'm serious about that. How awesome would that be yeah. if I just became an alien believer? Because a guy sent me some pictures in an email and then we looked at it together through a magnifying glass. There's something about that. That's uh, that's that that's good to me. I don't know. I like it, but you know, I, I do want to let you go. Um, yep. You know, maybe next time we can do something here, but I got to say, I'm not, I'm not impressed. I'm not impressed by what was brought here today. Jim, you're even less impressed. It seems. I, I'm not impressed with the meth methodology at all. No. Um, it makes no sense to do it that way. I agree. Yeah. If, if somebody out there is like Daniel and is into this and thinks they have better stuff, I do challenge you to send it and see if you can do it even better. I don't know if we'll do this like, you know, next week again or whatever, but uh, I don't know. Every once in a while looking at some pictures, <laughs> seeing if it's like Bigfoot or something, that's kind of fun. You know, I don't know. Uh, I, I enjoy stuff like that, but maybe it's not everybody's cup of tea. Uh, right now we have open lines, so we might be able to get another call or maybe even two, but uh, we've got open lines. So it's up to you guys to call in and have that conversation with us. Um, but anyway, I, I, I will say if NASA did take down this website because they got they accidentally leaked some aliens on there, that's got to, I mean, that's got to be a really funny set of conversations, you know, yeah. like some intern well, we was on YouTube even... and they're like, oh man, we got, we got to shut this off, you know. Well, we didn't give it, you know, why NASA would be hiding this, right? Trying to get a scientist to shut up about finding aliens, I think would be impossible. Uh, you know, it, it... I don't know. <laughs> 
look, Monday talks. Listen, I saw Oppen Oppenheimer. Okay, they were they kept that Manhattan Project on the down low for the most of it, right? I mean, eventually people were talking about it, but like, you know, there's people that hide stuff. I don't know. Well, the, think yeah, about it like this, Jim. Not- I'll give you my perspective on this. Okay, you're the U.S. You have the largest national defense force out there of all time and you get discovery of alien life that may or may not have capabilities just as good as you if not more you don't know how do you prevent a public panic from happening right you just don't talk about it so you figure out more stuff i mean like if 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 we were to ever figure out aliens were a thing they would definitely keep it a secret for a little bit there's no way they would be like oh we're telling everybody right away i i i don't believe that yeah i I, I disagree. I don't think there would be a pan- panic necessarily. But again, this is 2024. How many different ways do we have to put information out? Uh, it's very different than wartime United States, where you've got a handful of scientists. And you they physically isolated them, right? They, yeah. they, they, so it's not the same thing. And the Mars project is huge. There's geopolitical tensions here too. If the if there's aliens out there, Jim, they better be goddamn freedom loving uh, American loving aliens, and not those communist ruskies. You know what I'm saying? Like there's you want to get the it's all about xenopolitics, Jim. You got to get the aliens on your side, so that in the next global conflict, you got death rays and super cannons and. (laughs) <laughs> Not just whatever we're sending right now, right? I'm telling you, there's there's military strategic, you know, uh, uh, logic that can be applied to this. I think you got to think outside the box. <laughs> okay, but we do have a a picture of wind erosion creating something that looks like a phase. Yes, and I kind of want to show that this is a high resolution shot. It's the actual shot itself, not a photograph of this shot but does that not is that proof of aliens yeah for those of you that are listening we're looking at a picture of a rock it's a funny looking rock i don't know why it would be i it is it is kind of weird looking it i if i first saw that i might think that somebody might have carved it but then kind of looking at it again it is kind of wobbly looking it looks like maybe it's been you know shorn down by natural forces so i don't know i don't think yeah, that'd be a winner that's for me. out of it's in utah mm-hmm. uh i'm sure you can find find it but the, th- the three rocks behind it well it's actually one rock that looks like three those are what three heads talking i mean yeah if if this if the mars pictures were proof of martians this is proof of aliens that have stood still for millions of years <laughs> I, I i i guess I, no i i mean i agree with you that like look the pictures we saw right weren't good it would have to be videos and stuff you can't just you can photoshop anything these days right like that that's not going to be as impressive i think it, it would have to be something more than just here's a picture we may have gotten on a rover i mean we've got a million of those right that could be just be right anything it's just not enough we do have a super chat though that i am going to read it's from hell's bells uh love you hell's bells who gave six dollars and 66 cents he said i bet aliens ride past earth and lock their doors happy good friday you filthy godless (laughs) heathens yeah it's the uh it's the intergalactic zoo theory right the reason why we don't see aliens is because uh they don't want to interact with us (laughs) on some level or the dark forest theory where they could be scared that other aliens are watching and could alert us yeah. to their presence. So a lot of different ideas there, but uh, yeah, if there are aliens within reach, I don't think they're going to be, you know, walking and talking, obviously. Right. Uh, if you want my real take on things, but interdimensional beings that can cross time <laughs> and space. That's wow. a whole other story. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, we still got open lines here, so I think we're probably just going to be wrapping things up 
at the end of the show today. I'm not going to be able to go to the after show, and I don't think Jim is either. But if you want to hang out with yeah, Kelly no, and some of the other folks that help out with the show, you definitely can. You can go to tiny.cc slash ACD Discord. So uh, check out that link if you want to talk to some other folks about what you like about the show, what you didn't like about the show, or just questions about how the show happens. That's what that's all about. Um, before we get things going here too, I need to give a thank you to Jim for being on the show today. Thanks, Jim, for stopping on by. Hey, thanks for having me on. Yeah. If people want to find you, where are you typically located? Uh, I'm on Facebook. And then, I'll, like I said, I'll be on uh, AXP on Sunday. Yeah, for sure. Uh, well, I think then that's going to be a little bit of a shorter episode of Truth Wanted. That's okay. Everybody go enjoy your weekends. You know, go drink a mimosa or something. Uh, try not to let all the Christians doing wacky stuff get to you. And who knows? Maybe we'll get some videos on Sunday of, I don't know, people hanging on crosses and doing all kinds of wacky pageantry and stuff. That's always fun, right? We usually get a couple of rounds of those. So <laughs> looking forward to that. Uh, folks, I am Objectively Dan. This has been another episode of Truth Wanted. Remember to always keep on the truth, and I'll see you next time. Watch the non-profits and join the hosts in the live chat. Visit tiny.cc slash YTNP.